Hi, we are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julian Mijas in San Francisco. Well, we're here to tell you about the solar eclipse in Sagittarius happening here in uh, early December 2021, which we're calling Heal Breaches by How You Act on Your Beliefs. This one is a total solar eclipse. That means it's going to be pretty potent. We know it's a solar eclipse just by looking at the chart because here we see the sun and the moon together in a conjunction. So a solar eclipse is always built on a new moon and it has that quality of new beginnings of planting seeds. But a solar eclipse is an occasion where that moon is going to eclipse the sun. Um, a solar eclipse, unlike a lunar eclipse, is not as emotional, it's more physical, it's more actional. So because during eclipses, you've got to watch your shadow, your shadow is going to come up and it's going to reveal things to you about yourself. And with a solar eclipse, it does that through your behavior. And really, everybody should be watching for their shadow during eclipse. If this hits something in your chart very directly, very specifically, within like a five degree of orb, if you know what that means, then, um, then you're definitely going to be feeling this eclipse. There's a lot going on here. We have a conjunction with Vesta right here. We have Mercury also conjunct this eclipse. We have a square to Pallas Athena a trine to Chiron, and a sextile to Saturn. So lots of activity. Um, I think the Sagittarius theme brings in this quality of expanding your mind, being ready to grow, uh, themes of travel and adventure, also very much beliefs and opinions. This eclipse is coming at the very end of the nodes traveling through the signs of Sagittarius and Gemini, which they've been doing for about 18 months. The South Node has been pressing us to be release beliefs that we have been holding on to that just aren't working in our life. Maybe they're alienating us from uh, people that we want to be close to. Maybe people have decided that we're just really opinionated, really entrenched, and that they just don't want to relate to us anymore. The North Node in Gemini um, is providing the conversations necessary to change our minds. And this eclipse is kind of a last ditch effort on the part of these nodes to get us to just finally let go of the garbage that, that we've been holding on to in terms of our beliefs and opinions. Um, Julia, what are your thoughts? I want to ask you before I say any more, because I know you've always got great ideas cooking in that brain of yours. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, you know, so uh, the it, it is a releasing eclipse because we have the south node uh, there by the sun and moon, and uh, we are releasing the themes of Sagittarius, which can be our opinions, um, our beliefs, maybe some strongly held beliefs, and we we encounter some new information that that helps us to revise them. Um, I really love seeing that sextile from Saturn to to the sun and moon because. One of the tricky things with Sagittarius, and I'm not trying to beat up anybody who's got Sagittarius, I have moon in Sagittarius, but Sagittarius, you know, it can have a reputation for being a bit irresponsible, for being, you know, not having a bit of a blowhard. And Saturn comes in and kind of, and, and gives a little bit of a remedy to that, gives a little touch of a, a little bit of an antidote and says, okay, I'm giving you a little bit more follow through, a little bit more responsibility, a little bit more stick to itiveness, which I think is really, really helpful. And, and that strikes me as particularly helpful since this is a, a behavioral, actional eclipse, you know, uh -huh. so if you're shown your shadow via your behavior, that Saturn could kind of, you know, jerk on the chain and say, hey, is that really how you want your reputation exactly. to look? Exactly. It, it can help you sit on your emotions a little bit. It can help oh. you, you know, it, it can help because Saturn is the planet of limitation. A positive aspect from it can help us restrain ourselves, help us, um, yeah, put in a little bit of discipline, which, you know, Sagittarius could certainly use. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that trying from Chiron shows that release 
releasing this is going to be healthy. It's going to mm -hmm. feel better. Um, it might be a little bit of a, of a bumpy process because it's Chiron and, you know, Chiron points at our wounds, our, our older wounds, but that, that this release is actually going to help us heal. Um, it's a, it's again, like, even though this is eclipse season, we're seeing some positive eclipses, uh, in the, you know, which, which is making me happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. I'm seeing uh, a sort of a repeat theme of duality here because Pallas Athena's uh, square to these nodes brings in her themes of strength and softness. And because it's a square, I would think that that would be a, a sort of a polarized theme of like, I'm strong, but I can be soft. I can be open. I can be connected, but I'm strong, you know? Um, so I think that that's, you know, that can drive some bad behavior. Mm. Um, but, um, but I think Chiron in particular, oh, and, and um, Mercury is very dual in its nature. You know, it, it has, um, it rules the twins. Uh, it rules Virgo, which I think of as like Felix and Oscar, you know, both the, the Virgo that wants everything perfect and the Virgo that just has given up. <laughs> so there's a big duality repeat theme going on here and that this is placed in a mutable sign of Sagittarius. But I think that Chiron can really heal all of the schisms that may be present, you know, bring things together, seal them over, knit them together into something more holistic. Mm. Yeah. I'm also seeing some benefit in uh, Mercury and Vesta being together because Mercury is so distractible and can just go off and chatter, 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 loads of ideas, you know, especially in Sagittarius, which is its sign of detriment, you know, like sound and fury signifying nothing, mm -hmm. <laughs> potentially driven by the emotion of that moon. But then Vesta, I think, you know, similar to Saturn, it kind of can, can pull on the reins a little bit. Vesta's in nine degrees, it sextiles Saturn precisely. Together they form a, um, a containing, a focusing kind of a quality for that, you know, rather rampant Mercury. Yeah, no, that's that's a very, very good point. And Chiron is sextile Saturn as well. So there's like this nice minor trine of focus, yeah. stability, mm -hmm. being able to be disciplined. Um, this is this is a wonderful eclipse to to offer healing to somebody else. You yeah. know, even if it's something very, very small, or you think it's small, any healing is um is miraculous and wonderful. And uh yeah, and I think that would be a great use of this. Yeah. So if your beliefs include an open heart, this is a really great time to act on them and to build bridges to people who believe things different from you and to recognize that, you know, at the heart of, at the center, at the core of every belief system is the idea that, that, you know, humans are, are good and uh, and can connect with each other in a good way and transcend, you know, the um, the details of those beliefs. Absolutely. All right. So hope you enjoyed that video about the solar eclipse in Sagittarius. You'll find it on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology, in the December 2021 news playlist and other great stuff like it. And also you'll find it on our monthly forecast page at pandoraastrology.com. And if you enjoy pandoraastrology.com, then uh, please show up frequently. Check out our many great articles and uh, book a reading with Julia or me and um, uh, take a class as well. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.